Honestly, I can't believe this is happening right now. I've never made a YouTube video in my dining room, but the lighting is pretty, pretty decent, pretty, pretty much better than my room. But you know, I can always edit and alter and make light better. But yeah, this is Embrace of Madness. If you are new here, welcome. This is my podcast. I just recently have been doing video podcasting, so that's exciting. I have a bunch of audio-only podcast episodes, Spotify, iTunes, basically everywhere the, pl uh, la, 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 the platforms that podcasts are hosted, and you've got a couple video ones on YouTube. You can check that out. If you're, if you're here, you are probably maybe already aware of my YouTube channel, but it's youtube.com slash at Embrace the Madness. I guess that would make sense for people who are listening on audio. There should also be a link in the description. <sighs> but yeah, it's been it's been a minute and I've been really trying to do this thing where I won't do it unless I'm like stoked about it. And that's not to say that's like always the case because sometimes I do stuff and I'm not stoked about it, but I've really been trying this practice of waiting until the inspiration hits. And I know sometimes we think like that's not really a reliable way of navigating, but if I've learned anything in my creative journey, it's that honestly, it just reminds me of a cat. You know how a cat's like, oh, I want to come snuggle with you, but not right now. And like, you just kind of have to play at the whim of the cat. And I'm just learning that's kind of my relationship with creativity. I think definitely creating structure for myself and all that jazz allows me more creativity and more space to flow. So I'm still learning how to do that. But yeah, I just have spent and and you could probably hear it in a lot of podcasts. I know when I did my Patreon, like I felt like I had to I had to do it, especially when I started. I was like, if I don't have a podcast out every Monday, well, if I don't have a podcast out every week, which, you know, I used to schedule them. So it's like if I didn't have my podcast ready the night before or hours before I was just really hard on myself and you know as I get older and it's been like a few years since I've done it I'm like I really don't have to do any of that and and you know like we're, we are our biggest critics but I believe that my audience you know just wants to hear what I have to share and they don't they don't want me to be stressed out and they don't want me to be like mar, 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 because that's not what you want to hear <laughs> I mean that might be what you want to hear but I'm learning that, yeah, my relationship with myself and my business and, and all of that and my podcast, all of it, I just, I got to be in tune with my flow so that I can actually show up and, and do the thing. So last time we talked about this whole social media, career, likes, being an artist, all of that, I shared my kind of experience with it. And I was laughing because I, like, was a millennial. So I grew up with MySpace and really realizing that... I might need to get water. Realizing that we've fucking grown up with social media. Like, likes and sh that stuff has never not mattered since I was, like, 12 or 13. And that's, like, wild to think about. It's wild to think now that future generations are getting on social media even younger and technology is wild. I highly recommend you give it a listen if you are an artist or creative or have ever struggled with likes or worrying about what other people think and all that jazz. Ooh, I said that twice this episode and it hasn't even been probably five minutes, but I'm glad you're here. I appreciate y'all just letting me do my thing and, and show up and share what I know. I've definitely been in my head probably the last several months. I kind of dropped off. I've been posting pretty regularly on TikTok and started my YouTube really focusing on that. And I've just been just kind of off off some social media. I haven't really been out. We've just been at our house really just nesting. Work's been intermittent for me and I think that's just kind of been like a a thing just figuring out what I want to do that is inspiring that pays me and is really aligned with my my skills and my talents and what I want to do and bring about in the world so been so much in my head and I have sometimes like a list of uh 
podcast episodes I want to do. It just, like, depends because, you know, I'm trying to practice, like, oh, I don't want to force myself because you can hear that. You can hear it when someone doesn't want to do anything, especially with video. You can see it. You can, you just, you just get the idea that they don't want to be here. And, like, I'm a sensitive person. Like, when someone doesn't want to be here or I can feel that their energy is just, like, not present or pissed, like, you can really feel it. And I don't want you guys to have to, like, deal with my shit. Like, I go with sh- through shit because I'm a human and... I want to continue sharing that with with y'all but yeah I've been in my head and so I was like damn it's probably a really good podcast to have because I know I'm not the only one if you're a fellow air sign I'm not an air sign but I have an air moon Libra Aquarius Gemini you know that sometimes we get stuck in our heads sometimes the gears are moving and like our brains are like no but like we can't always be there because we're here. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's been, it's been an adventure trying to pull myself out. I talk about it a lot and I'll probably talk about it forever because it's my life. But when we got here, it just felt like a crash landing. We moved from Memphis to Nashville. It was like New Year's and the house we were supposed to move into was flooded. And I've shared that, blah, blah, blah. And we're basically over it. It's just been like, you know, it's just felt like months behind. And then, you know, like, I try not to be hard because it's like, oh, well, it's okay. It's not like you are supposed to be anywhere or be doing anything. Like, so it's just, it's just been weird. And I think, I don't know because I don't know and I don't presently go to therapy. And I know I talk about going to therapy and, you know, either way, I think knowing myself, I probably was depressed. And I don't take any medication raw dogging it out here. But I also pride myself on being really, really in tune with myself and self-aware. And I feel like I've got really good habits and I've been picking up exercising. And so I do a lot for my mental health in a way that I feel, I feel good. But I would say probably that if you were to zoom out and look, it would probably be a dip. Which is fine. It's fine. It's weird. I'm sure, like, a lot of it is I miss my family. That was something I was realizing, too. Like, we all kind of experienced this just newness, you know? Like, you can be happy for someone leaving, but it doesn't mean, like, it still doesn't feel like they're getting ripped away. And I'm not saying that's how they feel or anything like that. I'm just acknowledging that, you know, a major life event happened. So, it wouldn't be surprising if you were depressed. And so, really today I feel really good. And I wonder if you're into astrology. I know the nodes just shifted from Taurus and Scorpio into Aries and Libra. So, I've got some Aries in my chart. And and I imagine it's, you know, a big transit. But the last few weeks have been rough mentally. And I'm so thankful that I have my practices. You know, I've been, I talk about it sometimes, but... I've had like a really, really good, strong, consistent journal practice for the last three and a half years. And that, yeah, I don't know what I would do without it. But I just wanted to share because I know anxiety is not something that we experience on an individual. Uh, That's not how I meant to say it. Uh, It's not something we're alone, you know, like everybody has anxiety. I think it's just a symptom of living in our world in 2023 you know a lot of what I share in Embrace the Madness is about like how do we take this this anxiety and just all of this mental and emotional weirdness that you know is a symptom and is a you know when you want to use a word and you're like that's not the right word I was gonna say precursor but symptom consequence anyways I just feel like it is part of living in a society that doesn't really feel like it was created for you. If you are creative, it looks bleak and depressing looking at at the state of the world. I mean, you don't even have to be a creative to to feel depressed when you think about life right now. I just say creatives because I know they tend to have a connection to suffering and and like the emotional experience. So 
I'm sure we all fucking realize. <laughs> I'm like, can I cuss? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and that shit's hard. And I think I, I like to think that I have my wits about me and I can navigate through things. And, and I know that, you know, people benefit and, and really resonate with things I have to share as I go through these, these experiences. Because to me, this human life is is universal. We are all humans at the end of the day. We all have these emotions that not always make sense. We have a brain that likes to zoom, zoom, zoom. I do think it's crazy that not everybody has an internal dialogue, but I don't know. And then there's like the whole neurodivergent spectrum. And it, yeah, I'd be curious to see like different research about because it all, it all, it all seems to make sense. Like, especially with our generation and the way society is and how a lot of us report feeling like, I don't feel like I fit in. I don't feel like I'm meant for this. I don't want to work one of these jobs. Like, I want to go get out there and live and play and, and be in nature, right? Like, I wasn't born to go sit at a desk. And some people like, desk jobs and that's okay and and I wonder if like boomers and gen x just like that's just what you did you know and and it feels like we're kind of creating this new way of being which is really exciting but all that to say like I've been in my head and and there were even days where I was just like I don't even know like the most I can do is like lay (laughs) like literally and especially just you know with with figuring out how to make a living out here so many people were like oh you're gonna move to Nashville and it's gonna be you're gonna be broke and everything's so expensive and I'm like okay I acknowledge this but I'm also choosing not to identify with that because I believe that we can afford things and you know I have the privilege of being able to work a job and and live in a house and pay rent and and feed feed ourselves and it's just been an interesting transition And I also, and I would love to talk about money one day. I think I'm still understanding my whole kind of background with it and, and, and mindset and learning. And I think I'll definitely probably do some because I, not to get off on a tangent, but I feel like money is just, it's a part of our 3d world. I mean, until we figure out another system, like right now, this is what we are working with and I'm not doing this episode about capitalism or or any political things (laughs) I'm just I don't even know why I went off (laughs) who fucking knows somebody gave her a microphone (laughs) but yeah ultimately I would want to talk about money because I realize like how in our heads we get about it like I just start freaking out about how I'm going to pay my bills, how we're going to do anything, you know, like, and, and I had to realize like a lot of that is my brain just like, we don't have to like be a dead horse by like bringing this shit up and just like ruminating, you know, but like I sure as hell wasn't taught how not to, you know what I mean? Like. I definitely don't think we were emotionally set up to handle this stuff, but I really feel called to explore this part of existence and reality. And and I really have found that figuring out how to balance and find equilibrium has saved me. Like, so I just want to share, you know, what's worked for me and what what could possibly help you? I know you don't even have to be an air sign to be in your head. I like I really just feel like anxiety is something that plagues us all. Whether I know there's a spectrum of like, oh, you could be really, really anxious or you could just have like general anxiety, but it's disempowering and and it's like paralyzing and I feel trapped. I love the the card in tarot the nine and ten of swords are like just these people who well really the ten of swords is like they're just like they've got so many wounds from all of these like mental swords just like puncturing them and and that's what it's felt like lately like 
anxiety just like so painful even though it's like all up here <laughs> oh it starts up there but like there's got to be another way you know there's got to be a way that we don't have to live in fear and anxiety every day and i also acknowledge that i'm a white female and i understand that i have certain privileges that you know my anxiety might not be the same as someone else's anxiety I want to help all of us realize that there are ways of transcending that that trauma and anxiety and and figuring out how to transmute it and at least live a little bit better or a little bit more at peace. I know I grew up with a lot of anxiety. I just a lot of trauma just in my body and I think the older I got like being able to do practices like breathing exercises or breath work or meditation, dancing, like things to get this stuff out. And it's been so helpful. And I think we got to share it with each other because we're all dealing with it. We're all experiencing, it, it feels like after COVID just like, you know, like for a minute looking at the news, you're like, oh, cool. What's going to happen today? I don't know. And it's felt like that recently too. I, trigger warning, I was not closely involved, but just like at least like adjacent to the school shooting here in Nashville. And so, you know, if that affected me being like way off to the side, you know, there's just so many people that are impacted way more intensely. And, And this isn't to create a hierarchy of suffering or pain because, you know, all of our pain sucks and all of our suffering sucks. And... And I've had to talk to myself because I'll be like, oh, well, my pain's not as bad as that or, you know, my suffering of the situation isn't as bad as this perspective, but it's still pain and it's still suffering. And I think it's so important that we acknowledge our individual pain so that we can acknowledge other people's pain and, and work together to figure out how to make less pain. So if you are new to anxiety or you're like, fuck, I have anxiety. I don't know what to do. You've never, you know, had any access to therapy or you've just never been to therapy or gone or anything like that. Anxiety is basically this kind of reaction that our bodies are having to danger or threats. And this is like my favorite intersection of psychology and biology and evolutionary science because we as humans are humans we have a brain and we have consciousness and awareness and emotions but we also have very similar biology to i don't know other mammals other animals even insects like we have some similar structures like i really do like we're all from the same, we're all from carbon, but it it really provides this like connected perspective for me. And like going back, anxiety is just this response to, you know, an animal feeling threatened, an organism feeling threatened. Our, our bodies have these systems that, Hey, there's danger. We need a GTFO or, you know, something bad's happening. I need to get out of here. Fight or flight. I have a whole entire episode, Cultivating Peace from Within, that talks about this and and the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic, fight or flight, things like that. And so anxiety is our body's response to perceived danger and perceived threat. So we, as animals, notice danger, but you'll see, you know, danger in 2023 looks different. It's not like a tiger chasing after you in a jungle it's someone bullying you on social media or it's someone saying a rude comment to you at the grocery store you know like we have so many different little micro ways of feeling threatened and feeling danger that our animal brains don't really know how to tell the difference and so And this isn't to like minimize any anxiety or anything like that. But like at at its basic definition, it's just our body's reaction to danger. 
perceived danger, real danger, whatever. And so for me, that was really helpful to realize because I'm like, oh, well, if this is my body's response, then it's keeping me safe. That's pretty cool. And I know sometimes it's hard to like remember that in the moment or if we're going through it and we're like, oh, well, this is keeping me sane. <laughs> but it really does like provide this, this universality of it and this connectedness to it. And the way my brain works is like, oh, well, let's look at the biological reason. Let's, you know, work backwards and see how we can navigate this. And there's a super cool, super cool book called The Practical Neuroscience of Buddhism. I really love that intersection too of just like spirituality and science. I really think that they're here to teach with and about each other. And anyways, it is this really research heavy, science heavy book that has a lot of the current research on brain health and It actually takes a lot of the tenets of Buddhism and the textual teachings and provides research, like science-backed, peer-reviewed research studies of like, oh yeah, well these monks meditated and their gray matter increased. Or, you know, we looked at the way, at how, what structures are lit up and get activated when you get that notification of danger you know when when we something see something dangerous we first our eyes have to see it and then they send that information to the brain so we pick up information with our senses our sight our sound our our smell our touch our hear i already said sound sight smell sound touch taste And yeah, this information gets picked up by the brain and then the brain tells different structures like, okay, you need to immediately go send all this blood to your legs so you can run or it sends it to your arms so you can punch someone. Your brain is like rapid firing like, okay, this is happening so this needs to happen and also like if we had a bad experience with something that gets stored in our memory you know I'm not really sure what all the research is on like animals and memory and stuff like that I'm sure they have like averse experiences because of memory but you know our memory is stronger when we experience a negative uh encounter so like the memory actually gets solidified I'm pretty sure someone can fact check me but Yeah, the memory gets solidified more intensely when we experience negative things versus positive. And if you understand that our body is trying to keep us safe at the baseline, foundational duty, then it makes sense because it's like, oh, well, your brain would want to remember the really bad stuff so that it doesn't happen again. Your brain wants to remember the thing that almost killed you so it will know next time, GTFO. And so starting to look at our anxiety like that is just fascinating to me. There's so much research out there, you know, if you want to get on a cellular level or a systems level, or if you don't want to get on any level, um, it's just fascinating to me and, and yeah, really powerful. And it also just brings up this idea that like suffering is universal, like humans suffer like we experience suffering because we're human and i know different religions talk about why you know some believe in original sin some believe that we're being separated from god or our wholeness you know like different people say different things and whatever you believe is whatever you believe i think just at the end of the day is like okay well we can, we can fight over how it got here, but the thing is, like, it's here, and it's bothering me, and I would like to live a life without it, or as minimal as possible. So, anxiety is our bodies letting us know that things are not okay, and that we are in danger. And so, we have thoughts come up, too, because, you know, the emotional aspect of things are also considered, and, like, our thoughts can create emotional responses 
if I think that that jaguar, jaguar, that's so weird because it's not jaguar, <laughs> jaguar, jaguar. I think that's right. <laughs> now I'm like, what's a jaguar? That's so crazy that we say jaguar. Or maybe we don't say jaguar. <laughs> but if I think that that jaguar is dangerous and scary and gonna eat me it's gonna like bring up all these like emotions like fear and like stress and anxiety and I don't know if stress is an emotion but you know like it's just gonna bring up all this stuff and it's like from that moment then that's what our body's responding to I don't have the book on me and I don't remember exactly but I think Buddhism refers to it as a second arrow so it's like this idea of having a thought and then the reaction to the thought is like getting shot by an arrow and then shooting ourselves again with an arrow because it's like, oh, well, if you didn't shoot that second arrow, it might be less painful because a lot of times that second arrow is what is causing us the most pain. And that's what I'm realizing too about this whole just chapter and really my whole life is like the way I think about things or think about something is like, oh, that's what's making me feel so bad. Like, because I ruminate or because I think it's like the end of the world, I'm just in so much pain and, and in so much mental anguish. And and I know when we start thinking about law of attraction and people are like, oh, your thoughts create your reality. I completely acknowledge that like, how do I want to say this? Sometimes it feels impossible to think our way out of something. Sometimes it's not possible to think our way out of something. I'm realizing that a lot of times we... It's just the way we we relate to things. It's these second arrows that we create that is actually probably the reason for a lot of this anxiety. And that's not to say that, you know, there aren't real world things that are actively harming you or causing you pain and suffering. It's just interesting to consider like, oh, I wouldn't have even thought that, you know, I was thinking about something in a certain way that is actually making things harder for me. <laughs> yeah, just really acknowledging where where all of these thoughts are coming from, like all the rumination that's happening and how it's really not doing me any good at all. It's actually making my experience worse and I'm suffering more. I'm living in my head so it's like I'm living in this idealized fantasy world based on what my brain is saying is real and it's actually keeping me from experiencing life in what is like in front of me if that makes sense and so we talked about what it is kind of and where it comes from well going back to that whole second arrow is what if there's a way to stop that second arrow from puncturing us? What if there's a way we can slow down and not think a horrible thought? You know, like what, what, like it just asks these questions like, and I love solving problems. I love, I really just, you know, where there's a look, there's a, (laughs) where there's a will, there's a way. I really think that like everything is solvable and we can create creatively find solutions to problems and yeah I just I'm an optimist I just believe that things are possible I mean it's taken me some time to really really truly believe that but I feel like I just need a whole b-roll of just like me being like I lost my place I don't know where I am this is also another part of the intuitive channeled speaking is like sometimes there's not an outline and sometimes who knows what I'm going to say, but I really hope this is all beneficial because I, I just know how painful and uh, it's just like gut wrenching. Like that's what I think of just like when we live in our head and we're just like in our thoughts and, and we feel like there's no way we feel like there's no way out. We feel like the world sucks and we feel like nothing's working. Our brain's really good at making us feel like that. You know, like our brain wants us to be safe and comfortable and taken care of. I remember 
and I'll probably share this before, but like my biology teacher taught us like there's two goals to survive and to procreate. So, you know, an organism wants to live, doesn't want to die because it wants to continue life. It wants to procreate. It wants to have offspring. It doesn't want to die because if it dies, then its lineage is dead. Like there's no more. So it makes sense that our brains want to keep us safe. It's just, you know, the way things are in 2023, it's just different. We have the internet, we have technology, we have traffic, we have cars, we have, we just have so many things. We have machine guns and we have assault rifles. Like, you know, like there's just so much shit, so much shit in 2023 that is anxiety inducing. We've got the news. The news it's, it's unfortunate because it's like one of those industries that relies on creating drama. I don't know if y'all have ever seen Nightcrawler. Jay Gyllenhaal's in it. But it's like, I'll do anything to get like the most dramatic and like graphic story. And it's like, some people are into that. I get it. I'm just not into it. I'm also, you know, very pink and light. And I like to play in the clouds, not in the darkness. But... Yeah, that stuff's anxiety inducing. Crime podcasts, I'm not talking them down. I'm just like acknowledging that they they are probably a boost in cortisol. Like shit freaks us out. And like the thing is too, our brains have a hard time telling what is real and what's not. Like watching, we were watching, uh, Donald Glover did that show. What was it called? It's not Atlanta. Heckin, I might have to look it up what show is it donald glover tv show swarm i love donald glover but like that show was intimate like that show was like gnarly and i just stopped watching scary movies a long time ago i don't know i'm sure it would help if i wasn't alone but yeah that show was hard, but, like, I could feel, like, how I would just be, like, up in my chest the whole time. And it's crazy that, like, movies and entertainment have the possibility. I mean, music even, like, have that. They're able to elicit those feelings from us. But, like, this brings back the whole, like, disempowering thing. Our anxiety and our, like, fight or flight can be disempowering. When we live there, when we are stuck when we feel like every day is scary and sucky we do not have any power because we are trying to protect ourselves we feel like there's nothing else to focus on we feel like nothing else is more important because you know I got bills to pay I got to feed my family tonight like yeah I'm just so so grateful and I can only imagine how sucky it is and how painful and to feel trapped and to feel like nothing you do is going to get you out of this. But like, we got to believe in ourselves. And and like, it's a whole thing. It's like, we literally don't have the brain space or capacity to, to care about things or to believe in possibilities because we are so tunnel vision on like, I got to make sure that nobody dies today. So if you have anxiety and you are like well how do I how do I deal with it how do I get out of fight or flight how do I how do I fix this how do I yeah how do I not be here all the time and you know I think that's a question that we're we're answering as best we can as time goes on like we're all we're all just human and learning and yeah I know that generations before us weren't really set up to to be aware of of how these emotions impact us and and all of it and and I know we are moving into a time where mental health matters and and we really care about this stuff but it's just crazy like it's crazy and and I think I was talking about the news but it just feels you know disempowering because when the news gets off on like ratings and things that are scary it's like going back to the beating the dead horse it's like oh look at this news story and this news story and this news story and this news story and then it's like okay well I hope I don't die today and then you wake up in the next day and you're like and this news story and this happened and this happened and you're like well today's the day that I'm gonna die and it's like oh that's 
sad and really it's kind of infuriating like it hurts my heart that we have industries that like get off on people's pain and you know you can call me a snowflake and you can call me blah blah blah, a whiny baby a wussy I don't know but I care about feelings and I care about taking care of each other and and yeah I I still dream of living in a world where we love each other and that's all I'll say about that so figuring out how to get from this place of fight or flight to I don't know from this island to this island because honestly it's like we can't really expect ourselves to take these huge leaps like I think it's great to have, you know, uh, an anything is possible mindset. I think our mindset and beliefs do really come into play when, when, when we are facilitating change and creating things like that, but we just need baby steps, you know, at first. So something to, and I, I really think that awareness of, you know, that second arrow, like, okay, well, knowing that it's even possible to pause is a huge step, you know, if you don't even think it's possible, like, if you just think you're a victim to your circumstances, like, of course you're gonna have a hard time, but just even knowing that it's possible to pause, I think is a huge, huge step in the right direction, a huge, you know, weight off of our shoulders, like, okay, it feels less heavy because I know that there's a way to reduce my suffering, so really just becoming aware that it is possible to to go to a different island to go to a different place oh there's a pretty butterfly and they're like yes there's a possibility and this is like a huge skill and muscle that you have to build and I actually did a huge July collective reading on this um it's on my YouTube but yeah learning how to become less affected by things and our emotions because you know, what are you going to think if danger comes? You're going to freak the fuck out. But like, if we can begin to teach and learn that all of these things aren't necessarily threats, they're, they're, we're not in imminent danger right then. You know, like if our brain freaks out that someone says a mean comment on the internet, like we can remind ourselves that it's not, that comment is not life or death. That comment is not about to kill me. That comment is, yeah, just not, we just learn to give things less, mm, and I don't really know the word I'm thinking of, but making ourselves aware of our breath too is really important because we actually have a cool way of inducing the pure, pure, parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system just by breathing and so this is a really cool thing to be aware of and I learned it from the practical neuroscience of Buddhism but we can actually induce it because we are telling our brain that we are safe when our brain is like oh no we're not safe that's when things start kicking into gear but when we can pause and let our brain know that we are safe, even in that moment. I mean, it's one thing if you are, you know, in an experience where you're literally not safe and literally in danger. But for all of these times when we're not, or if our sweater got ruined in the dryer, like, that's, that sucks. And that's like a, a yucky thing. But, you know, it's not life or death. And I think we have a lot of those things in our lives that we think are life and death but they're not and so like reminding our brains that we are safe is is another huge step so to induce the parasympathetic nervous system um and I'm not sure if it was a certain number of breaths but just by deep breathing we can slow our heart rate down Because that's a whole, I kind of touched on it, you know, when I was talking about the blood sending, uh, the body, the brain sending, telling the body to send blood to the legs and things like that. It's like a lot of times during fight or flight, not even a lot of times, like the whole point of fight or flight is like helping our bodies escape danger. And so one of those is increased heart rate. And 
if you've ever had a panic attack or even just like maybe something under a panic attack where you're just like nervous and your heart's beating real fast, you know like that feeling. And you also know, this is where I feel like the second sword comes in, at least for me, is like if I notice that my heart's beating really fast, it starts beating faster because I start getting scared or more scared. And so, yeah, like learning to... (laughs) Learning to just slow down and pause will will really help our anxiety and our brains from like spiraling and snowballing. So what you can do when you notice that you are especially anxious and you don't really know why, even if you do know why, like getting in tune with our bodies is so powerful because this is where like being in our head is like, it's just like the ruminating and it's like the second arrow. When we stay in our head, it's just like meow. But really slowing down and connecting to our bodies, we can induce that everything is okay. We're going to rest and relax and and, uh, the opposite of tense, relax our muscles. So what you can do is just start doing deep breaths. And if this is brand new and you've never actually done breathing or anything like that, You're going to breathe in through your nose, and I like to do out the mouth. You can do out your nose. It doesn't doesn't really matter how. It just matters that you are taking these deep, long breaths, and it's probably going to take a couple of breaths for you to, you know, feel some relaxing from your body because if our brains are... I don't know if you've ever like been pedaling on a bike, but this just came in my head. If you were just like, if the pedal just kept going and it was like slowing down, like our brains are just like that. Like it's not going to just immediately stop. It's going to slowly slow down. You know what I mean? So what you can do is just start breathing. So I like to do square breathing. It's a popular technique of just like four breaths in, four seconds of holding, pausing, and then four of breathing out, and then four of pause. So you can do that, and as you become more comfortable with it, you can actually do longer breaths, uh, longer pauses, longer exhales. So let's do a couple together. So we're going to do, remember, four, 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 and I'll kind of guide you. Okay, so... But yeah, you'll notice that just as a result of just literally focusing on our breath, that becomes our main focus, you know, like everything else just seems to fall away. I really enjoy listening to soothing music that really helps, you know, when things are just slower, we can connect to that more natural, slow, rhythmic way of being. You know, fight or flight just has this like, (laughs) I don't know about y'all, but like, I'll just be like, whoa, I haven't been breathing for the last five minutes. And like, of course, our bodies are like doing all this thing, all of these things autonomously. I think that's the word. But still, like that short, that those short breaths are what is like keeping us in that fight or flight. So by taking the time, even if it's just for 30 seconds, to come back to the breath can be a complete game changer. And even if this is like a practice that you can do if, you know, let's say you have a heated phone call with either a, a partner or a boss or, or a friend, you can take a moment to just chill. 
I'm not saying shove your feelings away and pretend like that didn't happen because I think our feelings are important and all that, all that jazz. And I'm just saying that you deserve peace of mind and deserve to chill out because, you know, we're not in danger. I just had a really emotionally intense moment. I can make it through this. And I can take time for my body because I want to suffer less. I want to feel better about this. I don't want to feel like I'm going to die. I don't want to feel a panic attack. I don't, I don't want to be here. So that is a super helpful practice. And going back to the practical neuroscience of Buddhism, it's got a lot of research backing meditation. And I think it's so cool that we've had these philosophies and and groups of people who have been meditating for centuries more than centuries but really feeling the benefits of this connected to breathing and when we go back to the nature aspect it's like animals aren't worried about traffic or well deer are but let's say you know like a tiger living in in its habitat it's It's going to feel fight or flight when it's chasing its prey, but the majority of the time it's like in tune with its natural rhythms and breathing and chilling. And like, I think us as animals, like that is our natural way of being. It's not being in a fight or flight triggered state of being all the time, you know, like we deserve peace and we deserve space and calmness and and we don't deserve to live in our heads in anxiety because we're worried about things like it sucks <laughs> i'm tired of living in anxiety like anxiety will have you think of dumb shit like i will snowball so fast like i'm just visualizing snow it's like mm. yeah i I have to tell my brain. Like, I am getting to a point where I can, like, chill out and stop listening to it. But unhinged. My brain is unhinged. And I know I'm not alone. I know that a lot of our brains are unhinged. And I also acknowledge that we live in a society society that profits off of us being triggered and, and being unhinged. So I want to do my part in helping to create a society where there's less... If we're unhinged in a good way if we are more at peace and, you know, less suffering, because I think we all deserve happiness and peace and, and tranquility and, and rest and to be able to relax and not worry about dying. Like, it's just, that's so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. Yeah, I acknowledge that, you know, not everything's going to be fixed in a day. And I acknowledge that suffering is a part of human existence. And who knows if it will ever go away. I do believe that we are moving towards, yeah, just a lighter, better way of being. So I have a lot of hope and and faith. And and I know that by sharing practices like this that have worked for me can can only benefit you and, and so many people. And yeah, getting in tune with your breath, meditation. I love journaling. I love being able to get all the shit out of my head onto paper. It's almost like a transferring of energy and it's no longer in my brain and it's over here. And and yeah, really being able to just like write out a few pages of all the scary thoughts that I'm having and stuff like that, like to be able to get it to leave my brain is is a blessing. If you are able to go to therapy and yeah, see see a mental health professional, I think that's super important, especially when we're working through big scary things or traumatic things. There's there's a lot. And I also acknowledge that not everybody has the privilege of going to therapy and I'm grateful for all of the you know, organizations and, and ways that we are trying to make mental health more accessible. I love being able to share what has worked for me and I feel really, really hopeful about the future and and I know that the more we get in tune with ourselves and connected to ourselves and nature and our community that shit's just going to start popping off and I'm excited. So this was kind of a cool long episode. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to me 
go on my million tangents and just do all the things. So let me know if this was helpful for you. Let me know if I answered any of your questions about anxiety. Let me know if you have more questions about anxiety. I love answering questions and yeah, helping you realize that what you want is a lot closer than you think and and a cool happy healthy life is definitely possible for all of us and yeah i look forward to hearing from you and i can't wait till the next episode this is embrace the madness i'm madeline and i'll see you next time bye